I'm Leslie Tate. I'm the author of this book, Thing Ways to Be Equally Human, with Black Spring Press. And I have glaucoma. And I'm going to read to you about glaucoma. I'm also going to show you somewhere, and I've just knocked it down because my vision isn't that good, the bottle I use and how I use it into my eyes, which is in the story, but I'll show you how it's done. So here goes, glaucoma. It's early morning and I'm standing in the kitchen holding a small plastic bottle. The label on it says Blandfort. It's an eye medicine. One I know is powerful. The prescribing doctor warned it might hurt. So I'm extra careful as I pull down my eyelid and squeeze in a drop. But when the drop lands, it tickles as if someone had doused my eye with warm water. I blink, then following instructions, close my eye and finger press the corner. I can feel where bone meets flesh. Now I'm going to show you how that's done. Take off my glasses. Here's the dropper. And I'm going to start in my right eye and hold it down press in and then I keep my finger on the corner and the reason for that is to stop the eye medicine draining into my body where it won't be very effective and instead to go out the other side where the eye duct leaves my eye and glaucoma is because my eye duct is too narrow um, liquid is collecting at the back of my eye and putting pressure on my eye nerve and now i'm going to the other side i should stay longer of course i'm groping around for the bottle here it is <laughs> right i put it into my left eye squeeze again pull down and then put my finger there now, i should keep this longer but i'm just showing you now my left eye is where most of the damage has occurred that is that the pressure has damaged my uh, eye nerve and I go into a machine and I have to press a button when the flashes come up and doing so showed me that an awful lot of my vision in the left had gone, I'd lost. So that's something I'm going to read to you about right now as I go back to the story. So here we are, Ways to Be Equally Human. And this is the glaucoma episode. The book, of course, covers a lot more than that. Um, it covers myself being non-binary, it covers um, climate change, uh, the activism that my wife and I have been involved in, it covers spiritual matters, it even covers next door neighbours and the problems of living in an estate. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fairly very, and being on the radio, by the way, which I am. So to go back to where I was in the story, I keep my finger there for a few minutes counting. The instruction says it's to stop the medicine reading, reaching the rest of my body. I wonder what's in it and think of toxic chemicals. I remember drops that burned or caked up my eyelashes and others that made me feel tired all the time. I switch the bottle to my left eye. As the drop lands, I'm seeing the field test print out. It was covered in crosses. I'd scored a duck. After treating both eyes, I sit down. My view has changed. The room looks slightly odd and the angles have softened. It's as if I'm peering through a dirty window. Of course, I know what's happening. My sight's draining away. When I first learned that I had glaucoma, I was prescribed Tafliprost. Despite being weaker than Glanfort, the drops worked, but with side effects caused by preservative. When I took them at night, I'd wake with my eyeball stuck to, eyelids stuck together. It resembled what my parents called sleepy dust, but this was closer to being in a plaster cast. Removing it was like scraping wallpaper and brought hairs with it. What kept me going was my belief that the treatment was temporary. Later, 
When I spoke to my doctor, the truth came out. As he switched me to preservative free drops, he said, they're for life. At first, I didn't believe him. Surely there must have been a mistake. But as I left the clinic, the words sank in. Perhaps I'd known all along. Or maybe I'd been told, but missed it. Even then, at a deeper level, I was angry. What had happened to me, I asked myself. Why? It felt like an unjust punishment. Over the next few years, I used the drops every morning, squeezing them into my eyes. Taflopros didn't hurt and felt a bit like an old-fashioned eye bath. When my annual checkup came round, I stared into a simulator, pressing a clicker when I saw a flash. Afterwards, the doctor directed a white light into my eyes, then floated a disc on my cornea. The field test was bearable. The light didn't hurt, but the disc, despite the anaesthetic, required clenched teeth. On all the visits, my pressures were good and my eyesight stable. So when the appointment stopped, I continued the treatment, telling myself I was fine. And when my vision blurred, I blamed it on aging. Even when my left eye missed it up, I put it down to cataracts. It was only when I couldn't read medium-sized print that I went to the optician and she referred me. The result is what I live with today. Looking back, my dad suffered from glaucoma, but for a long time it remained undetected. He was a tall, serious, dark-haired man who sat next to the window in his high back chair, reading. Nothing suggested that he was struggling to see. He'd been a good sportsman and a surveyor during World War II, and his thick black glasses gave him gravitas. He was a sensible, rational man who'd survived the Western desert, but for him, glaucoma was a stealth attack that went undetected. He wasn't given tests, and when he complained, the optician simply changed his glasses. It was only after his death that I realized that he'd been sitting there for at least a year without a book. Glaucoma is a one-way trip. If you don't spot it early, all you can do is limit the damage. In my case, I felt let down. Danforth works better than Tafloprost, but it can't bring back what I've lost. There's a freeze frame, lights down feeling about it, as if I'm alone, walking into nowhere. It reminds me of playing in the garden, stalking my own shadow. When the clouds come over, I hide behind bushes. With nothing to go on, I'm invisible. There's danger all around. I've lost my way. I need to keep direction and talk myself up. The world I've taken for granted is no longer there. It's like opening a black box with my name on it. And having said that, it seems as though with the extra treatment and everything changed and bang it in three times a, a day, that my pressures have finally dropped. So it has stabilized. I can't have it back, but it is better I can manage. And I'd like to recommend, if you enjoyed the reading, my book, which of course I have to do as an author. I'm not a large corporate organization bombarding you with endless um, uh, promos. and um, But I am an author who really cares about the language he uses and really studies not saying it in cliche and not saying it in language which is just impossible to follow and being as revealing and honest 
which I, I hope you think from what I've read, I am revealing and honest and telling you the inside story. So thank you for listening.